Hey folks, how's it going? It's Mr. Murray coming to you with a video breaking down how to solve exponential equations. So um, in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to break down what we've been talking about in class uh, for the past few cycles. And that is about this idea of exponential equations, what they are, all right, and the two cases for how we solve them. One where we use the one-to-one -one property and one where we use logarithms on both sides of the equation. Now, this video might be on the longer end, and that's because, again, I'm going to break things down into pretty significant detail. So, you know, if you're in a place where you already understand the basics of uh, these exponential equations, maybe you skip past that part. And so, again, I really encourage you to look to the timestamps to make use of that. But throughout this video, um, I'm going to be providing you as much detail as I can to really help you, no matter where you're at, understand these key ideas. So that being said, I'm going to jump into what we call the basics, right? <clears throat> and that's supposed to kind of be a play on words in a sense, because what this is right here is this is kind of our standard exponential equation. All right. It's an exponential equation. Now, when we began our investigation of exponential equations, you might remember that we looked at a graph and in the graph, we might ask ourselves, when does a value of a function of an exponential function reach a particular Y value? So here, this function is actually getting at um, two times three to the X plus two is equal to 20. And so what we learned, one way we could do it is we could graph both functions and see where they intersect. And so here they intersect at 2. So that means x is going to be equal to 2. Okay. And so that's what essentially a exponential equation is. It's an exponential function that's essentially been set to a specific value. And we want to know what x value will lead to that particular y value, so to speak. And so that's why we spent some time looking at the different kinds of graphs, but also we spent time on the fundamental strategy behind how we solve it. <clears throat> so I'm going to go into case one. And in case one, what you're going to see is different colored text. You're going to see red text, you're going to see orange text, and you're going to see green text. And so this is my way of slowly but surely giving you more and more and more um, responsibility over understanding what's going on here in this video. So in the beginning, I'm going to kind of go through things in detail. And again, if you want to skip right to some guided practice, feel free to do that. Then there'll be problems where I'll do a little bit and maybe leave some time and, and some pause for you to help. And then there'll be ones where I'll ask you to do on your own. So case one is the first case. And in case one, um, it's what we might call the quote unquote easier case. So the first thing you always want to do is you want to get the base alone. And that's remember what we call bases alona. So if you have an equation, and let's say our equation is like we just saw, 2 times 3 to the x plus 2 is equal to 20. Okay, the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get the bases alone. So here what I would be doing is subtracting 2 and dividing by 2. So I subtract 2, I get 18. I divide by 2, I get 9. And that's step 1. Because now on one side, I just have the base, 3. And on the other side, I just have a number. So now I have the bases alone. Now, what's special about case 1 is that in case 1, you're able to rewrite the other side as a power of the same base. So for example, the left side remains 3 to the x, but the right hand side, instead of writing it as 9, I'm going to write it as 3 squared. And again, this isn't always going to work, but when it does, we want to consider using this strategy because it is a little bit more straightforward than what we're going to see is the second case. All right. Now, what this allows us to do is once the bases are the same, what we can do is we can cancel them and set the exponents equal to one another. In other words, bring them down, and then we can finish solving. In this case, we already have it solved, so we're basically done. 
but in some cases it might not be that straightforward so this is basically what you need to know about this one and remember bases alone is crucial you can't do anything until the bases are alone okay that's true no matter what case you're dealing with canceling the bases is something we're going to do in both scenarios and then finish solving as well okay so folks that's the idea and remember this one is not always going to work but when it does it's generally a little bit more straightforward okay let's take a look at a little bit of guided practice here so in the guided practice i'm going to show you getting the bases alone setting the right hand side to be a power of that base canceling the bases and bringing the exponents down and then getting the variable alone and sometimes it's x as you can see here and sometimes it's p so if i look at the first example i can already see that the bases are alone so i'm going to ask myself well is 16 a power of 2 as it turns out yes it is it's 2 to the power of 4 because 16 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 okay so in this case again I was able to do that and because I can do that what happens is these bases cancel and what comes down is x plus 3 is equal to 4 and then all I have to do is subtract 3 from both sides and I get 1 plugging 1 back in you can see I get 1 plus 3 is 4 and as we just said 2 to the 4 is 16 all right, coming over to this one on the right, I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides by 3. Okay, so we've got 5 to the x plus 3 equals 25. Now, if that was confusing for you, think about this as a variable. Imagine you were solving the equation 3y is equal to 75. How would you get this alone? Well, what you should do is you should divide both sides by 3. And so the process of getting a letter alone in a, in a linear equation like this is very similar to what you're doing here when you're getting the base alone. It's just that instead of y, you have something a little bit more complicated. Notice, however, that 25 is a power of 5. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the left-hand side as is. And remember, the goal is to write the other side as an equivalent expression, right? So it's going to be equal to 25. But the base of that expression is 5, right? So then the bases are equal to one another. And now that the bases are equal, we get x plus 3 is equal to 2. So here, x is equal to negative 1. And I know that things aren't too creative there, but that's not necessarily the point, right? The point is I want to talk about what do these things have in common. Forgive me, I'm a little bit OCD about that line right there but no worries okay <clears throat> moving on down to another orange one for us to try okay so again the idea is to get the base alone so just like you'd get a letter alone if that was imagine this is like a y or something first you'd start by subtracting so i'd get three times four to the p minus six is equal to 190 2 okay I divide by 3 and I get 4 to the power of p minus 6 equals 64 okay we're gonna rewrite 64 we're gonna ask ourselves is that a power of 4 in this case it is it's 4 cubed that lets the 4's cancel so I get p minus 6 equals 3 which means that p is equal to 9 all right last one we're gonna start here by adding and I did this one intentionally because this is a common one that people get mixed up okay so you really want to do it step by step then I divide by 6 on both sides and notice how I remove the parentheses once this thing is the only thing left it's okay to do that if it's the base is all alone okay otherwise it's gonna look like 63 so you wouldn't want to do that okay just remember that anything to the what is 1 to the 0 okay so you're gonna rewrite this as 3 to the 0 
So 2p plus 4 is 0. So 2p is negative 4. So p is equal to negative 2. Okay, so that's some mixed examples just kind of delving into how to get the base alone, set both sides with the same base, cancel the bases, and solve. If there's anything in here that was confusing to you, please go back and rewind. And then in a moment, we're going to look at ones for you to try. All right, these four green ones are going to be for you to try. Okay, these are problems for you. So what I want you to do is please pause the video, try to solve these four problems. Then when you're ready, unpause the video and you can see what I got. All right, so in the first one, um, the base is already alone. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rewrite the other side. Three to the power of three is 27. That means the bases cancel and I get X minus one equals three. And then adding one to both sides, I get X is equal to four. All right, in problem two, you first need to isolate the four by adding three to both sides. So you get four to the Y plus two is 64. Okay, 64 can be rewritten as four cubes. This means the bases cancel and you get Y plus two is equal to three. And then subtracting two, you get Y is equal to one. All right, coming over to the third one. First, you'd be subtracting four. So you get five times six to the P minus three is equal to 180. Okay, dividing both sides by five. Notice I can now remove that parenthesis or you can keep it, it's not a huge deal. Um, when you do that, you get, let's see, so five into 18, three times. So 36. Perfect. 36 is a power of 6. It's 6 to the power of 2. 6 times 6. That means the 6 is cancel. And you get P minus 3 is equal to 2. Which means that P is equal to 5. Okay, last example. This is, by the way, a 2S minus 3. If you couldn't tell from my kind of somewhat crummy handwriting. Okay, so I'm going to first add the 36. So I get 2 times 5 to the 2s minus 3 is equal to 1250. Okay, I divide by 2 on both sides. I get 625. Now, is 625 a power of 5? Yes, it is. It's 5 times five, times five, times five. So that means these cancel. I get 2s minus three equals four. So 2s equals seven. So s is equal to seven halves. So you could either write seven halves or you could write 3.5 or something equivalent to that. Okay, again, it, <clears throat> if I wanted to check my work, I'd plug that in. Okay, 3.5 times two is seven. 7 minus 3 is 4. 5 to the 4 is 625. 2 times 625 is 1250. 1250 minus 36 is 1214. And so the process that I'm using to plug in, you can see that I'm essentially just going, when I'm plugging in, I'm going in the reverse steps, right? So first I doubled it. I subtracted 3. I did the power. I multiplied. I added. Okay? Okay. So please make sure you understood what I did there. This was, remember, uh, case one. And then in a moment, I'm going to do a similar look at case two. All right. So case two is just a little bit of a tweak on case one. So case one, everything was hunky-dory, right? We were able to always rewrite the right-hand side as an equivalent expression. So the base we got alone was equal to the base of that expression. And so that allowed those bases to just cancel and go away and the exponents to come right down. 
Now, as you saw with the law with the light bulb lab, the light bulb lab involved perfect squares. And what you found is that often when you take the square root of a number, it doesn't work out to be a whole number. Now, similarly, what we're going to see with exponential equations is that most often you're not going to end up getting a whole number because oftentimes um, a number isn't going to be a perfect number, will not multiply an even number of times or a whole number of times to get to another number. So in that case, we're going to take our, our four prong strategy and we're going to tweak it up. Now, this strategy will work for both cases. It is important to know it will work for both cases, though it's generally more difficult to use in case one. So you want to think about the right and the wrong time. So this part is going to stay the same. We're going to get the bases alone, just like we always did, right? Just like we did here, right? We started with bases alone. But notice the main change is now we're going to take the log on both sides. So remember in class, I said we can add to both sides, subtract from both sides, multiply on both sides, divide on both sides, take a power, the nth power on both sides, and take the root of both sides. Okay? But none of those help us when we're dealing with something in an exponent. So what we've now learned is we now have the additional tool of taking the log on both sides and we can make the base whatever kind of base we want. Remember when it's natural log, we're going to use ln. When it's e, we're going to use ln. So the goal is you take the log on both sides and the base of the log, you intentionally choose that to be whatever base you got alone because that will mean that the base the log and the expression the base of it cancel out and the exponent comes down so it achieves what step two was supposed to achieve in case one so it leads to the basis canceling and then we finish solving now this one's more complicated and that's where we're going to spend a little bit of time practicing it but it is something that we want to work at and kind of work towards like a mastery of. All right. So the key is, is that you're not always going to know when this stuff happens, right? And so I'm actually going to tweak this up. This was originally 16, but I'm actually going to make it 17. Okay. And so the issue is, is that now 17 is no longer an even power of two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the log on both sides and I'm going to choose the base of the log to be two because that's the base of this expression. Okay. When I do that, this log cancels with the two. Okay. And what comes down is the X plus three. But what you do to one side of an equation, remember, you have to do to it the other. So if I take the log of the left-hand side of the equation, now I need to take the log of the right-hand side of the equation. Now, it is important to note that that 17 gets brought in, and when you now subtract the 3, you don't touch the 17 at all. That's one of the biggest mistakes I see made, and I'll tell you, it happens in college classes too. So you don't make it a 14, you keep it as a 17, and then whatever you get, you're going to subtract 3. Now let's not forget, we do have the formula to change the base. And so to change the base, let's go ahead and take a look at our calculator. Okay, folks, so here I am with the calculator, um, and what we need to do is we need to do the log base 2 of 17, okay? So to do that, remember, on a calculator, you're going to do the log of 17 divided by the log of 2. That's called the change of base formula. Alternatively, you could do the ln of 17 over the ln of 2. You're going to see it done a lot that way. It doesn't matter which one you choose. You can see you get the exact same answer. Whatever we get, we're going to take it, we're going to subtract 3, and we're going to round to three decimal places. So 1.087. So x is approximately 1.087. Now let's check our work. So let's do 2 to the power of 1.087 plus 
3. Now, if our answer is right, because we, we just plugged in for x, what we should get is about 17. And what you get is 16.99. Okay, so that's, to me, very close to 17. Okay, very good. Okay, on this one, we're going to get the base alone. So that's going to involve subtracting 2. Okay, so 3 to the x minus 1 is 37. So we ask, is 37 a power of 3? And it is not. So we're going to take the log on both sides. I'm going to choose the base to be 3. So I get x minus 1 equals the log base 3 of 37. And then what do I do to get x alone? I add 1 on both sides. So I get x equals log base 3, not of 38, of 37. Remember, you're getting that value, and then you're going to add 1 to what you get in the answer. So here's what I do. Ready? Let's go to the calculator. So remember, we're going to do the change of base. So the log of 37 over the log of 3. That's the log base 3 of 37 plus 1. And we get 4.287. Four point two eight seven, and let's plug it in. So we got three to the four point two eight seven minus one plus two, right? Because we got to add the two at the end. We get thirty nine point zero zero eight, which is very very close to thirty nine. So it's a good sign. Our work is going to check out. Alrighty, folks, so let's head to the third one. We've got uh, 2 times 9 to the s plus 2 <clears throat> is equal to 80. Okay, so again, as with all of them, the goal is to always try to get the base alone. Okay, so to get the base alone, what do we need to do? Look at it. We need to do what? In this case, it's going to be to divide by 2. So we get 9 to the s plus 2 is equal to 40. We ask ourselves, is 40, okay, is 40 a power of 9? It's not. So on both sides, we're going to take the log base 9. Okay, and then what, remember what we do to one side, you do to the other. So it's going to be the log, it's going to be on this side, though, that'll have canceled. So on the left side, you're going to have s plus 2. And on the right side, you're going to have log base 9 of 40. Okay, and the last step is going to be subtracting that 2. So we'll come to our calculator. We'll do the log of 40 divided by the log of 9 minus 2. And we get negative 0 0.321. Okay, and let's try to plug that in to verify it. So we're going to do 2 9 in parentheses times like this. And then don't forget to add the 2. You can see we get 80.02. So that's going to check out. All right, last one. This one's tricky because of the E. So it's first you'd be subtracting the 6. Okay. Equals 24. Then you'd be dividing by 4. So e to the 2t minus 5 equals 6. Now remember, because this is ln, you're, this is e rather, you're going to take the ln on both sides. And so what that's going to do is you're going to be left with 2t minus 5 equals the ln of 6. So I'll add 5 on both sides. 2t equals ln of 6 plus 5 by adding the 5. And then I'll divide by 2. So t equals, and I'll put this in parentheses, ln of 6 plus 5 over 2. Okay? So let's go ahead and plug that in on our calculator. I'm just going to move this over. So I've got, now you can use the ln key, ln, let's make sure it's in vision here, ln of 6 
plus 5. I'll take that and divide by 2. And I get t is approximately, ooh, wouldn't want to lose that window, 3.3 nine six okay three point three nine six all right so that's the idea folks that is the idea all right so now it's gonna be again one last time for you to try okay what we're gonna do as usual please pause the video okay try to solve each one of these problems using the strategies we've been working with then when you're ready, unpause and you can see what I got. All right, so on the first one, we're ready to go right into the log of two on both sides. So on the left, that will cancel. On the right, you're gonna get the log base two of 23. And then you're gonna subtract five on both sides. So log base two of 23 minus five so go to our calculator. I'll do the log of 23 over the log of 2. That gets me the log base 2 of 23. And then I'll minus the 5 because I had to subtract the 5 on both sides. And I'll get negative 0 0.476. X is about negative 0 0.476. Okay. Again, you're going to round to three decimal places. Okay, on the next one, I'm going to start by dividing by 3. That gives me 12. Okay, again, you'd, you'd want to ask, is there a whole number power of 4 that gives me 12? In this case, there isn't. So I'm going to take the log base 4, so these, lo these bases match. And then what you do to one side, you do to the other. Okay, so on the left, I'm left with x minus 2. On the right... I'm going to do log base 12 over log base 4. So I get that stuff. And is it alone? Do I need to do anything else? Yes. Because remember, all you have so far is log base 4 of 12. To get x alone, you need to add 2. So I'll take that answer. I'll add 2. And I get 3.792. Okay, move on to the next one. I'd be subtracting 16 first. So 2 times 5 to the 2s. That would be 39, 33. Oh, that's an interesting one. So I get 5 to the 2s equals 33 halves. Because remember, 49 minus 16, if you don't believe me, Watch me fail at, at arithmetic. Nope. Okay. Divided by two. And we could do we could call it 16.5. Or you could use if you knew the laws of logs. Now 16.5 is not a whole number power of five. So I'm going to do the log base five on the left. And the log base five on the right. On the left, these cancel. So I'll extend that. So what I'm left with is. 2s equals log base 5 of 16.5 and then I just divide by 2 so s equals log base 5 of 16.5 divided by 2 which is approximately let's take a look so the log of 16.5 divided by the log of 5 because that's going to give us that log that we're looking for. And then we'll take that, divide that by 2, 0 0.871. All right, last but not least, we need to first start by adding the 6. So we get 2 times e to the t plus 3 equals 24. We'll then divide by 2, e to the t plus 3 equals 12. Okay, remember in this case, you take the ln on both sides, and the ln is actually easier to calculate because there's an ln button on your calculator. So these cancel, and you get t plus 3 
equals the ln of 12. So two, uh, t rather equals the ln of 12 minus 3. And I come in here and I'll do that. The ln of 12 minus 3, negative 0 0.515. Okay, so folks, it's going to bring it to a close, all right? So in this video, just to recap, we summarize three basic things. What exponential equations are, how to solve them with the one-to-one -one property, and that case one, where you can rewrite the right-hand side so the bases are equal, and then the general strategy for what you can do by using the logs on both sides when maybe that case one isn't a possibility. I do hope you found this video to be helpful. I encourage you again to continue to watch through it, watch it again, watch it at your own pace. But folks, keep it up, stay positive, don't forget to love math, and remember, you can do it. All right, until next time, folks, have a wonderful day.